I'm sorry, I'm very mixed on episode 8 of 2.5 Dimensional Seduction. Uh, on one hand, like, this episode felt very bland. Like, there wasn't any fun, there wasn't any etchy, there wasn't any goofiness, no silliness. There was a few parts here and there of Vidisha being goofy, and the whole wall slap by Hanyu, that kind of stuff. But it just felt like there was so much focus on introducing a lot of drama that I don't think is necessarily, doesn't have weight to it. I think the whole segment with Nagomi is just, it feels like there's no weight to it. It feels like it's trying way too hard to create this tension. Now, it could, it could highlight a sense of Ririsha's self-confidence, which we've always, we've already kind of highlighted. Lidisha has an issue with self-confidence. And it does look like Nagomi is sort of challenging that self-confidence. So we'll see if it actually does something with it. But overall, I, I think the thing that bugs me about this episode is that I was... I was obviously at the very beginning thinking that Nagomi was going to be a playoff of, well, obviously she is a parallel to Masumine. Let's just get that out of the way. Yes. <laughs> you have somebody here that is obsessed with 2D boy and she wants to be 2D. She doesn't care about 3D boys. Oh, wow. That sounds similar to Masumune who wants to love Lidiel, this 2D character and doesn't want 3D girls. They're very similar. Yes. But I thought that she was going to be a playoff of Mayura or Hanyu. This idea of Hanyu feels like she has to leave this behind, this whole idea that she has to grow up, uh, you know, they're, they're branding her or whatever. Whereas Nagomi accepts it, accepts the criticism, and doesn't care because she loves this one thing. She wants to go towards this one thing. She's obsessed with cosplay because she wants to be in the 2D realm. <laughs> so, yes, it's not the same driving force as Hanyu. But she's accepted it and she's made it pro. She's going pro and this is all she does. She made it her living. So it, there is a playoff with Hanyu. But that all is aside. Is it really this simple? Is she the next harem member? Is Nagomi, is it this obvious that Nagomi is the next harem member? Because, yeah, this, this character she's obsessed with, this 2D character, has the same hairstyle as Masamune. So I'm assuming at some point while they're going to be cosplaying out there and he's going to be taking the pictures and she's going to be on the stage over here, it's, it seems to imply that they're right next to each other and thus they're basically trying to catch the flow of the crowd. Yes, she'll, Nagami will draw the crowd, but they're hoping to grab people as they're going by. And I think she's going to spot, <laughs> I think she's going to spot Masamune and go, oh my gosh, it's literally my 2D husbando. Is it really that simple? And that's, I'm sorry, that's just dumb. I'm sorry, that's just dumb. Now, I can see why nobody has brought it up before that he looks like this prince, but they've never imp they've never implied that Masamuni is a charming, good-looking person. He's not popular. People aren't drawn to him. People aren't wooed by his looks. I would imagine that he probably looks nothing like this Prince Charming, Prince Sama, uh, Ray Sama. So, I don't know, it's going to be really dumb if it's just based on, I don't know, his hairstyle being kind of frizzy and, and down. But they do imply that this character in this series is not very popular. <laughs> like, she's trying to get there early and they're like, yeah, we, we we have, nobody's buying these. She's like the only one buying the stuff. But anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm calling it already. This Nagabi chick is going to spot Masamune. She's going to go super doki doki over him and try to get his attention I don't know if this turns into her now cosplaying Lilia in order to get his attention at that point. Who knows? Or is she going to cosplay as a normal girl to get him? <laughs> That's the question mark. Anyways, it's dumb. It, it, I don't expect much of this series. I'm just kind of along for the ride because it's fun. It's got some dorky moments in the cosplay. I just wish that they would stop introducing characters and focus on the characters they got. Like, again, Mikari got left behind, like, really quickly. And it's kind of it kind of bugs me. But anyways, yeah, overall... It's an okay episode. It's pr it, not not my favorite episode. I did think the beginning part was okay. I really was convinced that they were going to be opening up a cosplay club. But now it does seem like they're trying to... They want to make sure that when they do some sort of thing, they're going to do it to highlight the cosplay. They're going to be a manga club that does cosplay. So it makes sense. They're going to go to a cosplay event. They want to, you know, do a report that shows how good they're doing the cosplay itself. So that's why they're going to do this. So... It did end up playing into my theory that their focus here is to bring the cosplay out. I just thought they were going to be making a cosplay club. So it looks like Masamune gets to keep his club. That conflict is kind of gone there. But yeah, of course, they bring in Hanyu. Hanyu's not liking the idea. <laughs> again, dredging up her, her idea that she feels like she needs to move forward. And again, I, I've talked this to death. I, I think it is a honestly a thing that a lot of people deal with at some point when they get to that certain age. And they're like, hey... Do I want to give this stuff up? People are going to judge me for enjoying this stuff. They're going to say things about me. And at some point, I have to give it up. 
And obviously, with Lydia, she's not giving it up. This is something that she wants to bring out in the open. I, again, that's that, that's the big key thing there is is really is going to be that push for Hanyu is that Lydia is willing to stand out there with confidence and say, "I love this thing." Yes, at some point, Lydia had that difficulty. Masamune kind of helped give her that courage, and now she's able to finally say, "No, I love anime. I love manga, and I love sexy costumes." <laughs> And so, yes, this is the the opposite to Hanyu, who doesn't feel like you can do that. And that confidence, I think, is going to be the thing that kind of triggers Hanyu to realize, oh, yeah, I can do this stuff still. So it's really cute there. I like that stuff. But, yeah, that all goes into introducing Nagami, which, again, she's obsessed with Kaisama of this game, who apparently is, like, the least liked character of the entire franchise. It hasn't quite got into what sort of triggered Nagami to go this direction, Except for the idea that it seems like she fell in love with Kaisama. It, with Masamune, the trigger is that at some point he was rejected and bullied. And then immediately after that, he became invested with Lilio. So it was a, a one-two punch. He's got this cause, this trigger to go in this direction and then something to keep him in that direction. Whereas Nagami it just seems to imply that she went straight to that second point. I just fell in love with this character and I want to be in that realm and the only way to be in that realm is to be cosplaying. I'm sorry, it doesn't make enough... <laughs> this doesn't make as much sense to me, but it's fine. Like, at least with Masamune, it makes sense. This is somebody that was hurt, harmed by bullying, and then went this realm and fell in love with this character that's outside of our realm. And it's in a safe area. Whereas Nagami doesn't make as much sense because, yes, she fell in love with this character, but her conclusion is, I need to, as a 3D self cosplay as this characters in order to be a 2d character in that world for kai <laughs> it doesn't make as much sense but it's fine it's a it's an excuse to again sort of parallel what masamune is doing it, she's basically masamune and liliel together that's really what it is she's really the two of them kind of put together into one being who's obsessed with cosplaying for this sake so again it's fine she's super cute the bunny outfit was Super good. I, I I absolutely love it. But yeah, I again the whole meeting between her and Nadisha, this fell off to me. Like this is this is probably like the weakest writing they've had in the series so far. It's really not gonna be coming uh, towards Nadisha mentioning the idea that yes, this guy gave me a picture of you, so they bring that guy back in the picture. It looked really good. You gotta work on your makeup or something like that because you're you're still in the 3D realm. <laughs> I just gonna kick out the fact that this Nagami character is like criticizing Lidisha, but she doesn't handle anything herself. That's what doesn't make any sense to me. Now, granted, it's more of an idea that she's got professionals to handle all that stuff for her, but you would assume that she at least has some experience in cosplay. It's just now people handle this stuff for her because she's working for this company. But it's still, it's kind of this whole thing of like, how are you able to criticize somebody and their work in cosplay when you don't even do it yourself? How is that your love for cosplay when you don't do it yourself? How do you love cosplay when you don't do really any part of it? She doesn't know the characters. She doesn't know what they like. She can't personify the characters. She can't create the outfit of the character. So all she's really do, she's just a model. <laughs> she's not a cosplayer. <laughs> I know that I'm, I'm curious if some people out there would kind of agree with me or disagree with me here. This idea of typically with cosplayers, it's everything. Whenever I think of cosplayer, immediately comes to me is the idea of the costume what they put together, the hand stitching of everything, the makeup, nailing every single aesthetic of it, then putting it on, it being the perfect fit, going out there, doing the poses, being the character, that's cosplay. She doesn't seem to have any of it. <laughs> like, she doesn't seem to have any of it. But that said, that might actually turn into a story beat. That might be a concept here that Liliel or Lidisha, Lidisha will confront Nagami with the idea of who loves cosplay more? Oh, well, obviously me, because... You're not doing any of it. You're just wearing the outfit. You're just wearing what people give you and you're posing. You're a model. You're not a cosplayer. You're a model. That's what you've become. And yeah, they, she does technically get into the idea of the criticism that she gets, that she understands that, yeah, there's going to be people that say I'm a sellout. I'm doing all this stuff and I'm a, I'm basically an influencer that has, is now just a model for this corporation. She's got it. But her whole thing is that she's okay with that. Like, whatever. It's fine. I love it. It, who loves it more? I'm I'm doing this to get closer to my 2D character, whereas you're doing it because you love this character. Which one of us loves cosplay more? So again, 
it's fine. This kind of rivalry between the two of them, it's fine. But at the same time, it, it just, there's so much in it that's kind of broken. I'm not really sure exactly what the writer's trying to do here. <laughs> like, it just doesn't really... The logic on both sides doesn't really seem to match. It doesn't seem to work very well. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where it does in the future. Again, I'm, I'm assuming that Disha's probably going to confront Nagami on the idea that she's not really a cosplayer. She's a model. And I'm assuming she's going to fall in love... Nagami's going to fall in love with Masamune because he looks like Kaisama. So... We'll see that. I was kind of hoping that they'd rope Mikari into the whole thing and they could do the pair as well. But again, I think the main reason why they're keeping Mikari out of the picture is the writing has sort of written her out of it on purpose because, again, Mikari is a model. She has an agency and she can't really do this stuff with Adisha. So she can't really be a part of everything they're doing. Anyhow, that's my ramblings. Of, <laughs> it really turns into a rambling video on episode 8 of 2.5 Dimensional Seduction. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, hit the like button down below, comment. Let me know what you think. Did you, do you think, do you agree with me? Do you think that she's more of a model than a cosplayer? Do you think that cosplayer really has to do all the other stuff? Or is it just simply putting on the suit? Because I know that some people buy pre-made, so I guess I'm kind of wrong in that regard. But you still gotta be the character, right? You gotta put yourself in the shoes of the character still. But yeah, let me know. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe before you leave. If you like this content and you want to support channel more, I have links in the description below. Greatly appreciate it, but until next time, y'all take care.